my first official game That's when against you the club, yeah. Orlando Pirates at Guatemala Stadium. We beat them. Clapo ticks his way past defenders. This is dangerous for Pirates. Time wherever I go, I had to have a tennis ball. Mm. That is why, you know, I, I was successful in playing soccer. Well, what an honor. What an absolute honor to have him live in Studio Teresa, one of the great teenage Nelson Mkapati uh, Lizadla, one of the greats of KZ Chiefs, one of the greats of South African football in his entire history and possibly in the top two players to ever grace or don the black and gold of the Pefeni Klemo boys. An absolute star, an absolute legend in his own right. We've spoken about it at length. Mkapati. Oh, goodness, what a player. What a player. A gentleman with a ball at feet. An absolute star of it. Gentlemen, welcome to the big chat with myself, SK Pasha. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening from wherever you are listening at. He's here, he's live, he's in studio. Nelson Teenage Mkapa Delilaza. Wow, what a pleasure. Babunjan. Uh, Spilile No, you can come closer to the mic. What will you, Baba? This is about you. It's the Itzako. Thank you so much for your time. We just want to hear about Ubaptinis Lala. Uba and Ubaptinis Lala. Uh, I want to greet all the listeners and say Ubaba Udlata Lom Kabatili was born in Painville in Springs in 1954. Mm-hmm. Springs is next is next to uh, Bakerton is next to Springs in in town. Yep. Yes, I grew up in Painville, and as a youngster, I used to you know play with the tennis ball all the time. I remember one instant I went to the shops, you know, juggling the ball, juggling the ball. They sent me to go and buy bread. I came back, juggling the ball, juggling the ball. I arrived, they say, hey, thank you, but I got a big clap, eh? <laughs> I sent you to the shop, it took the whole year to come back. And, you know, I, football is in me, you mm-hmm. know. I used to have a tennis ball. Every time, wherever I go, I had to have a tennis ball. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, I, I was successful in playing soccer. You speak about being successful. There's, there's, there's a bit of a, a link. Uh, just before the year ended, uh, I think the Panat Mature of 2023, we had once again another gentleman as well. Ayashi uh, Samadegi, Bashir Masang. He also speaks about a tennis ball. He also used to do the same. But teenage tennis ball, what is it about? What does it do for you as a footballer, for you to be you know, as good as you are? He a tennis ball. You you know you 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 get to know how it bounces. You get to know how to control it. You know, and at the end of the day, it becomes you. The ball will listen to whatever you want to say because you are always with the ball. Mm. The connection, yeah, just is super. Yeah, but without the ball, then. Not. Hence, yeah, <laughs> hence today I see players trying to control the ball and losing the ball. I, I mean, it's the basics. Those you teach to 13, 14 year olds. But in professional football, I'm surprised there are players who don't know, who don't have you know the basic skills mm. of soccer: receiving the ball, passing the ball, you know, heading the ball, which is our biggest problem. Mm. Our biggest problem is that we cannot head the ball. Sure. That's our problem from long ago. Mm. You know, unlike white players, like our Shane McGregor, mm-hmm. Noel Cousins, you name them. Yeah. On the head, yeah, they used to score beautiful goals mm-hmm. because they knew how to direct the ball. They don't close their eyes. Yeah. With us, we, we closing our eyes and you lose that, you know, focus mm-hmm. of hitting it where you want it to go. <laughs> but now we take it back a bit and notch in regards to where he grew up, of course. <coughs> When I went through a couple of uh, notes and a couple of research from the people that I've been speaking to in regards to his career, they tell me that Guatemala. But before that, he tells us he actually moved to Guatemala. Papinich, just take us through that uh, journey. 
Yeah, after Painville, where I grew up as a child at about six, seven years, we, because of the Group Areas Act, we had to move from Painville mm -hmm. to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. That's when I moved from Painville to Guatemala. And in Guatemala, I, ten, I attended Pulong Secondary School. After that, I graduated and I went to Takula High. That's where I matriculated mm -hmm. in Takula High School. Yeah. I mean, that school, Takula High, we had players like Andris Masego, mm -hmm. the late uh, Dr. Matibula, we had Buddha Matate, we, we had hey, great lots players. and lots of great players. Yeah. Because in Guatemala, there we had a team called Pilgrim Team United mm -hmm. Brothers. Mm -hmm. That's where Kesa Chiefs is. saw you. Got my clearance to come to Chiefs. <laughs> yeah. They had to go to Pilgrim Team United Brothers, yeah. the team that I was playing for. Mm -hmm. Because I remember uh, when they played this, uh, like the Net Bank Cup. Yep. There are first division teams that are playing against those who are up there. Mm -hmm. And we beat Pino United. Yeah. In the cup, yeah, in the cup game. Pino United had the uh, Mishak Mchangaga, they had uh, the horse Mkhojwa, Litalata, Aaron Gosi. The stars. They, they, they had star players. Yeah. But our, our team, Pilgrim United Brothers, we beat them. <laughs> because we had good players then, whatever. And there, uh, there was about, <laughs> if my mem memory serves me well, we had about 32 players. Mm. In Guatemala, yeah. playing for different teams in the then PNPSL, uh, yeah, before it became PSL. the PSL, it was by then NPSL. Mm. We had 32 players in Guatemala, we we're playing for different, some were in Wheatbank, some were in Pirates, oh, oh. some were playing for Chiefs, some, you know, different clubs, yes. And 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 there's, there's a story in regards to how. I think it's a bit of a painful one as to how you joined Kezi Chiefs. Uh, they came to your house. Oh. Uh, the great, uh, possibly one of the founders of the club. I think it's uh, Edward Nene. Edward Nene. Edward Nene. Nene. Yes. Alongside uh, your best friend, Jan Malumburi yes. He was 17 years of age at the time. Yes. Uh, take us through that, 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 that uh, experience as well for you to finally join possibly one of the greatest clubs on the African continent. Really, it was uh, very, very difficult for me because I was, I was at school. Mm -hmm. When I came back from school, at my street, they call it Putyakai Street in Farhanao, mm -hmm. in Guatemala. I was just walking towards my place and I saw police vans standing there and they were pointing fingers at me. Yeah, that's him, that's him. I said, what did I do now? Because mm -hmm. I'm just from school. What happened? To my surprise, I was told that somebody who, somebody was stabbed because of me. Mm. And that was Iwat Nene. Mm. Stabbed by one of the, you know, people in Guatemala there who were supporting uh, Pilkington United Brothers. Mm. I had to go to court for about two years. Uh, two years after that, I, I was now and then in court, mm. in and out, in and out. At the same time, I had to, to concentrate on my career of delivering at Chiefs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, uh, you know, because I'm doing them, I, I thank them, uh, you know, they made me who I am today, because mm -hmm. what they did in 1976, they took me to Kaiser's house mm -hmm. in Pefeni. Yeah. I stayed in Pefeni for mm -hmm. eight years. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I never, hey, I was always worried mm -hmm. at home, at home, I was, you know, homesick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 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 tell me, uh, there's there's been a lot of stories, Babam uh, Kapa did in relation to the founders of Kizzy Chiefs, and I'm being told that Nene also played a pivotal role alongside Uchincha Kulova. What's your understanding as to who founded Chiefs? I've I discovered that uh, whilst I was at Pefeni, mm. the players there were divided. Some of them never wanted me to play for them because they were angry, mm -hmm. firstly. I mean, losing somebody, you know, because what they told me that is that at the end of the meeting they had, because they, they, there was a squabble, mm -hmm. they said, no, guys, we know Iwat Nene. Mm -hmm. We know how good it, he was mm -hmm. when, you know, 
looking for a good player. Let's give this youngster a chance. There's something that you want to saw here. Mm -hmm. Let's give him a chance and see what he comes up with. And that's how I started playing for Chiefs. And I was, you know, with warm hands, they welcomed me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were a family. And first game, 1976, yeah. my, my first official game that's when you against joined the club, yeah. Orlando Pirates at Gautama Stadium. We beat them. And before that, when I played in 1976 for Kaiser Chiefs, my first official game, I went to Orlando Paris training session in January. And there they saw me and they said, ah, no, this one. Ah. Uh, now, what's yeah, I now went with Milton Gossi because Milton Gossi was playing for Orlando Paris. Paris. So he brought you to he Paris? He brought because we were schooling at the same school, yeah. Dracula High School. Yeah. He, he brought me there. And they looked at me and they, they joked and said, ah, this one, no, no, no. So When I met them in June, <laughs> <laughs> the very same people were fighting each other at the Paris. No, Miegile lo mundo, man. You left. You see, you see what this youngster is doing to us. <laughs> 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 But then I, I think I think also, uh, was it what just... What was going through your mind that you should have played for Pirates? You're making your debut for Chiefs up against Pirates where you grew up in Guatemala. Just, just the emotions of that uh, teenage. It's, it's, I, I don't know how to put it, but for me, seeing players like uh, the latest in Solengi, mm. may soul rest in peace, Shaka Nguabo, may soul rest in peace. You know, the, the Chiefs squad, I was, I, 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 I never thought... I would make it. Mm. I never thought I was. I was nervous mm. because they had great players at Chiefs when I arrived. Yeah, ah, they had good, great players there. Take us through some of the players that you, on your debut that you played with. Uh, I played with uh, Sugar Muguyo. He used to say to me, "Hey, give me, do your maraga ragas, <laughs> give him the ball, <laughs> and I'll hit the net." And that's exactly what he was doing, Sugar Muguyo. Samura Kulu, the king of Elix Park. May his soul rest in peace. That, that's another player, very, very good player. Waga Waga Likwebe, a very, very good striker. You know, I, we had SS. Jackie Masike at the back there, Asnamali. We had Puli Huku. Mm. Both of them were central defenders. Yeah. Then on the right, we had our captain, Raidamu Fukeng, may his soul rest in peace. Then on the left, we had Mkababa Tamini. Ay. Stop uh, we, then we had this guy who was underrated. Vusmuzi, mm. Lamula, Lamula. Maria, Maria. Maria. Ah, oh, you could. You could put a ball here, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. And just stand in the. You know, But just like Mabega Pansy, the late ace. Ace. He would tell us that, hey, look, these guys are flying. Why do you want to fly with them? He would walk. Literally walking. You wouldn't go there. With the ball. Let's bring them down to our pace. Let's not play to their pace. That's Shh. what, you know, he brought into the team. Very, very great player. But, but Tinej, <coughs> these, these nicknames, I mean, those are powerful, powerful nicknames. Yours as well, uh, Tinej, Mkabab, uh, Mkabate, you know, and the likes. How, how do those nicknames come about uh, com in comparison with what we have now? I mean, those... I'm surprised today's players are called by surnames. Uh, they don't have nicknames. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But supporters, it's the support. Mm. Because of my structure. Yes. The supporters said, I, I see how this one. Because I started once. I was still a very, very small guy. Mm. And I grew up at the supporters said, hey, Let's call him teenager. He's a teenager, this one, you see. <laughs> he's doing <laughs> something, you know. Yeah. He's got energy, mm. he's dribbling, he's skillful. Yeah. Uh, I went through a lot of your tapes. Last night, I slept very late looking at your tapes. Maudlala, tongue out. W why was that? W y why? It's natural. Yeah. Now and then you'll see me... You don't know my lips because I, I'm not using these things that people. I'm a zambak, nah, No, no. Yeah. You know, then I, I, I'm super. But people say to me, no, you're using multi. When you say, 
in your eyes, how did you play up against the Orlando Pirates in your first game at Guatemala? What's, what's your assessment of how you played? Exceptional. That's all I can say. Exceptional. Even the teammates came to me after the game and said, you know what? Keep doing this. You'll stay at Chiefs. And that, that was it. I never looked back. Twelve mm-hmm. full years, no bench, no injury, nothing. Just going out there and, you know, giving the people what they wanted to see. That is the legend, one of the greats of KZ Chiefs, Bob Teenage Mkapati His life is in studio. We are going to be speaking to him. Actually, I'll speak. Yes, Bob. Yes, I remember there was a game we played at Orlando Stadium yeah. against uh, Cape Town City. Mm. We were training 2 1. Yep. And I went to the ref and I asked the ref, hey, Mr. Ref, how long do you still have here? He said, Four minutes, teenage. I said, Okay, thank you. By then, our goalkeeper was Peter Palak. The great. Yeah. I went to Peter Palak, rolled this ball. He threw the ball at my feet. I went with the ball, using my teammates, you know, as walls. I even dribbled the opposition goalkeeper and scored. People were already out of Orlando Stadium. They came back. They said, hey, that guy, he did something. It's, it's now a draw. Let's go back and see the, the extra time. Yeah. We, it was 2-2. Two, two. Mm. We went to extra time. First half of extra time, intelligence played its part. First half of the extra time, I never, touched, I, I never kept the ball with me. Every time the ball arrives, I pass it. <coughs> they got used to it. The yeah. dribbling, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he's releasing the balls now. Second half of extra time, I went to the ref. He said, uh, there's eight minutes left. Well, thank you, Mr. Ref. <coughs> went back to Peter Palak, and I said, Peter Palak, roll the ball. He rolled the ball. I did the very same thing I did in normal time. In the last eight minutes of the second half of extra time. And I even tripled the opposition goalkeeper. Maxima Ponyana came to me and said, You want to prove it? You want to prove to us that that was no fluke? You repeat <laughs> it again. I said, it happens if you want to do it, do it. It happens. But tell me about that intelligence. <coughs> we, don't, we don't see it in, in, in modern day football or current football. But for you to have the confidence and the arrogance to do that, because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you are not I'm, that old at, at the time. I'm happy you asked that question. You know, I want to thank Dr. Kumalo's father, Prabro. Pro Kumar. We were a very fit team at Casa Chiefs. No wonder when you look at all our extra time games, we won them all because we were super fit. Mm. As an athlete, I mean, I believe that if you are an athlete, you should be fit, whether you're running, you're mm. cycling, or you're boxing, or whatever. If you're not fit, then I'm surprised I'm seeing too many players getting injured nowadays as to what the problem is. But fitness One of the key the components. Key. Yes. If you're fit, you can do anything. But then, e, t- tell me about how your life changed, uh, uh, about teenage when you were playing at Chiefs. Were you not? Were you not? You know, these these at the time. Maybe their fame is obviously different because there's no uh, social media then. But people loved you. How did you handle that? You know, maybe you can't now walk in my mall. How did you handle that? I, I, I'm surprised today to see players not, uh, you know, interested in signing supporters' autographs mm. and all that. Mm. I mean. Be friendly to that that supporter mm-hmm. is so proud mm-hmm. that he shook your hand. Mm-hmm. So show show them respect. Mm-hmm. No, I was always showing respect to whoever the referee, the opponents. Show respect to mm-hmm. somebody. Then it will, the universe will bring it back to you. Thank you. But how did you handle that thing, <coughs> Baba? How did did it not go to your head or who kept you grounded to say Ebola brought me here, but I need to respect these people because they brought me to this level through your skills as well, your hard work. But how did you handle that? The fame, the superstar? I had people like uh, Kaiser Mutau, Dr. Mutau, mm. you know, who used to sit with me 
and tell me that they look, we've seen people who became famous mm -hmm. and big-headed, yep. and they ended up having nothing. Mm -hmm. So keep your cool. Concentrate on the good things that you're doing on the field of play. Mm -hmm. Respect supporters, respect opponents, mm -hmm. respect referees. That's how I got it. Manje me ba o klubi la bantla wa e. Aye ga cool e u ya zala wa e. Ya zala wa e. How how did you handle that? The 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 women. We 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 used to go to discos. Yeah. As friends. You know, yeah, si shale ma disco gubem nandi. Yeah. Enjoy ourselves. Yeah. Come time to go home. You have about six seven girls saying hey hi. Number now. <laughs> you know, it was <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. But they'll come, they'll come. So how do you? Depending, how? depending on how we take it. Mm. Most mm. of them would say, you know, because I used to tell them, hey, hey, I'm taking, I'm married. Mm. I know. You are not as only. You are everybody is. <laughs> <laughs> But then did you how did you now explain that situation to your wife Oguti? She's got to understand that you know you are a public figure to some extent, but she is the one for you. How did you make her trust you and, and, and make her believe that Owako wait or no over with I man? You know, my wife, yeah, thank God mm -hmm. he brought it to me. Is so you know cool. Mm -hmm. She's calculated. She you know, she does everything that I want mm -hmm. her to do. Mm -hmm. Because if it were not for her patience, and mm -hmm. we should long have divorced. Mm -hmm. But she, she she understands that you know, I'm famous. Yeah. Every every girl wants to have me. Mm -hmm. So I thank my wife because now she was a. Hey, she was strong. Mm. She stood. Yes, yeah, she stood. You know, I'm married now for 31 years. It's the 31st anniversary this year with my wife. Mm. So we're together. Nothing will break us. Yeah. No. No ways. Not in this world. And how important is that before we go back to football matters, how important is it for you to have a wife while you're at the peak of your career when, when you know, everyone wants you? What does it do to you as a man and as a superstar on the field to, to have a proper partner? It makes me feel like, you know what, I'm doing everything I'm doing for her mm -hmm. and my family because family was always on my head. That, uh, mm -hmm. I, I've got two boys and I've got two girls, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so I must look after my family. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that came to my mind, that look after your family. Mm -hmm. And they were happy. Even today, they are happy. I yeah. left them happy at home. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back to football matters. Uh, 1979, I'm not sure if the game was in Durban. You score a hat-trick that possibly changes how your teammates perceive you, how the Kizzy Chief supporters perceive you, how Chinja Kulova sees you. Take me through that moment and what did it do to your life and your career? Unfortunately, I cannot remember that game where I scored a hat-trick and, yeah. you know, there are too many games that I can count. And, <laughs> you know, I, I used to go out there. Devon City. It was Upper Kings, Devon City, Devon 1979. City. Okay. I always went out of the dressing room before mm. the game to play for the supporters mm. who came to watch me. Make them happy. Mm. That's what I always did. Yeah. Make these people happy. Yeah. As long as my supporters are happy, I'll be also happy. Now, coming to back to Kizzy Chiefs, because that's where you really made your name. Uh, were you guys using something like before matches? Take me through that. Let's be honest. There's an instant at Orlando Stadium. Yeah. We had this you know, guy who came there, we were coached by Eddie Louis. Mm -hmm. We were seated, you see the seats there in the dressing room, we were seated like this. Yeah. And he was cutting us 
you know the legs twice with with the with, legs. with with the razor with the razor yeah peter uh, Eddie Lou was coached by then he was our coach coach yeah he had not yet arrived he okay was still coming yeah, yeah. Hey, when he entered the dressing room <laughs> he looked around there was blood all <laughs> over the place <laughs> like this it's coming from the legs that were cut but <laughs> and he was smearing us with something that was itchy you couldn't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to move around all the time <laughs> and you know, we went to the into the dressing room said Fuck, what's happening here this place looks like the butchery <laughs> was blood all over the place <laughs> you are training these people of their energy yeah you can't then kazam interfered said so this is our culture mm. this is what we believe in mm. can you please let us continue with what we're doing yeah and but no 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 other instances we had they said we had bad luck we had to go to the running river yeah and vomit four o'clock in the morning mm. peter palak looked he said, he said fuck you want me to, to vomit my bowels i'm not doing this <laughs> <laughs> We had those things. We mm. did those things mm. during those days because multi pe- people believed in multi, that multi is working. Yeah. We used to do that. But the white guys, mm. don't touch them. But then for when, uh, <coughs> did you understand it? Did you, you didn't have a problem with it when you joined the club? Did they explain that, you know, these are one of the uh, things that we do at the club that we believe in? When joining the club, they don't tell you. You'll see when you arrive there. <laughs> As to what when you're in Rome, you must do you know, what the Romans are doing. Yeah, you are in Rome. Yeah, do what the Romans are doing. I only discovered when I was right inside. So, oh, this is what they do. Huh? Fuck. <laughs> 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 no, at the end of the day, I'm going back home. Mm, maybe. Yeah, I won't die. Yeah, uh, you, you made this jersey number 11 famous at the club. Do you know who you took the jersey number from? But I know that you literally made that jersey to be a great number, a great number at the club. Um, some might say, through my research, that other players that have worn it after you did not deserve it. But then, did you have an understanding as to why you wanted to wear the jersey number 11 or you just wanted to create legacy with it through your name? No, the jersey was given me to me by, you know, the kit manager. Mm-hmm. <coughs> he just said, here's your jersey. You can wear it. When I looked behind, there was number 11. Just like ever that? Ever since, yeah. Ever since. I never knew who wore it before me. Mm-hmm. No. They just said, here's your jersey. Dress up, go and play. But were, 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 were you not nervous? Were you not <coughs> scared? Because jersey number 7, 10, 11 are, 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 are big, big jersey numbers, especially for each chiefs. It's 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 true. It's true. But mm. then you know, because myself also, I had this confidence that you know what, they want me to play what I love. Mm. I show them what soccer is all about. I never, I never, even these multi things of being cut and mm. vomiting. I, <laughs> I wanted to show them what I'm made of. Yeah, that's it. Uh. It is 24 concerning, minutes. Concerning the, the jersey. Yeah. The number 11 jersey. Mm. <laughs> this guy, Skarango Bese, won it. <laughs> he was trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Chavo Pule. Yeah. When I was saying, yeah. wore it. Yeah. He was trouble. Yeah. So. I have no problem now. I have got no problem. Yeah. No, I'm retired. I'm no more playing. Yeah. Why? Why should I be involved in things that I'm no more doing? Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going forward. Yeah. I'm not looking back. No, I'm going forward. It is what 23 minutes now after one o'clock. Well, before two o'clock, rather, we're still in conversation with one of the greatest players of KZ Chiefs. Uh, I want you to take us through 1980 to 1989, probably the most successful era of the club, winning 29 <laughs> trophies. 29 trophies oh. in nine years. What what happened? How did that come about? When I first arrived at Chiefs, mm. I never thought that I was going to make it mm. because they had great players. There. Yeah. Ah, they had great players. I remember there was a year when the pro of Chiefs by then was Louis Chakwan. Yeah. 
He used to say, hey, Operation Tata Zonke. We said, okay, we'll get all the trophies. And we won all the trophies mm -hmm. that year. Yes. Operation Tata Zonke. We won all the trophies. In 1981, mm. I won the, the footballer season. of the year. Yeah. Players, player. Players, player of the year. Yeah. Rookie, I think. Rookie of the year. Yeah. And I took it to go to Spain towards the World Cup. And I went to Spain. I, in Spain, they, I, eh. I couldn't breathe, man. My room was just up across, you know, like this opposite. Eh. You would come early in the morning. Yeah. Who's that visiting you here, man? <laughs> you want to run away now? <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, I, I, for me, soccer, uh, mm. I don't regret anything yeah. that happened during my playing era. I mm. don't, I don't. But it was all smooth sailing. Spain, who are those people that visited you? Beba Funan? Support us. It's support us. From ah, here. Yeah. Who are support us from here. Yeah. And to your, to your surprise, eh? Orlando Pirates support us. I used to be supported by Orlando Paris supporters, Morocco Solo supporters. You know, they would come to me and say, hey, you know what? Jealous uh, down. Uh, you, you, you are something else. Um, you don't, yeah, you are something else. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, that year, when you won everything uh, with the club, individually as well, what went what went through your mind? Was it not a case of I've reached the ceiling or you, you thought that you'd be much, much more better because at the time you had, what, uh, four or five years at the club? I was, you know, that year, 1981, mm. I wanted uh, to go abroad. Mm. But unfortunately, I couldn't because we were banned by FIFA. Yeah, if you remember. yeah yes. FIFA, we couldn't go. Mm. The only players who were going there was Essence Soling. Yeah. And shaban over sometimes. Mm. I don't know how they were making it, but I was keen to go and play abroad mm. and learn more about the game. So that when I come back, I've learned something there and I bring it back mm. home but did, and roll it out. Didn't, didn't it affect you? Because in South Africa, you've really dominated almost everything. You've won every trophy uh, personally with the club. Did that not affect you that, you know, uh, through what is happening uh, in South Africa, it affects you on an opportunity to play out in Europe? It did, but mm. then the situation was that we couldn't change, you know, being banned by FIFA. Mm. No, we were banned and that was it. We were banned, we were not allowed to play outside mm. because of our apartheid mm. regime. Oh. Yeah, I know. Bula <laughs> Maku, I mean. Well, Tinis Jaza is our guest. One of the greats as well. We posted it on uh, social media platforms. If you do have any questions, let's speak. Let's talk. Uh, let's hear what uh, you want to ask him as well. I think we'll also, in the last 10 minutes, also speak about what is happening at the club at this uh, prom present moment. Of course, uh, we've spoken about it briefly. Uh, but okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just have a brief, brief, uh, very brief chat in relation to that. Uh, uh, back to, to, to Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, <clears throat> The feeling that you had when you wore that 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 you know the jersey of of the club, uh, what did it mean to you? Did you also already understand you know the the value of the of of the club already? The supporters, you know, it's it's a big club. There's a lot of support alongside Pirates, alongside Morocco Solos uh, uh, then as well. Uh, there's another club in Pretoria that I'm also I think it's Pretoria Kelly's at the time. But what did it mean for you to wear the green and gold of 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 the Pefeni Lema boys? Something I want to tell you first. Yeah. I used to see Kaiser Mutawun coming to my birthplace, Spainville, mm -hmm. with his master to go and fetch his, his wife, Sulecha. Yeah. Sulecha used to stay with us in Spainville. Because mm -hmm. uh, I used to come with that master. I, I, used to, I was a young star by then, seven, eight years. Yeah. I, I looked at that master and I said, hey, Oh, that is Kaiser Mutawun. Hey, this guy. Not knowing that I was going to play him. S seven or eight years after I saw him. Mm. And I, I was, you know, looking forward to playing for any team in the PSL for, for the matter. That's mm. why I went even to all the Pirates sessions. Yeah. I wanted to play in the PSL. Yeah. And PSL by then, yeah. I wanted to play there. I used to see Keza. Now and then he was there. Mm. But take me through that. Uh, you are a youngster. You see 
I mean, at the, at the time already, you know, Keza was was well known, was famous. He's got a club. He went to play out in the USA as well. Uh, played, I think, with uh, you know, with a great player as well. For you, seeing a person such as him, Chincha Kuluva, what people I'm not I'm not I've got a photo at home. Yeah. You can like this. Yeah. Me myself. Yeah. When I arrived there, oh, I read this picture myself. Did you also want to be like him? Yes. Why though? At Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's unlike other teams where you see Gunama, Pansula, they wear mm. this. The trousers that we wore yeah. at Chiefs yeah. are not the same as Pansula's trousers. No. no. That, that's not our dress code. What, what, what those, was the dress code of? Those, those trousers with just one button that's clamping here. It's got a look, then it's a button, get here. Yeah. Without a belt. So we're not going to fish Bell bottom. But you Bell bottom. <laughs> trousers. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, down there it becomes bigger. Yeah. But here it sticks nicely here in the figure. <laughs> 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 That's how we were. Is, is I had a big art for myself. Yeah. I do have the photo at home. Is, 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 is that how the Tlemo boys, the name came about? Yes. Always neat, clean. Oh, the clamor. That's why you're saying they're clamor boys. Yes. So then he used to wear them. Shaka Novo used to wear them. Yeah. Almost everybody in the team wore them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you look off the pitch, yeah, my neat clamor boys. I was saying, but no man, I'm full of teenage man. Yeah, but l let's let's be fair on this one. Mm. If you don't look well, mm. you don't look good. Mm. Who is going to you know come after you? Absolutely, absolutely. You you take care of yourself, mm. then you're attracting people to you. True. If you don't, yeah, you're sending people away from you. That's how it is. Mm. Oh, <sighs> Nelson Tinislad. <laughs> Wow, uh, let's 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 come to uh, the financials, the money, mm. at Chiefs. Uh, take us through maybe your entire journey at, of, of twelve years, Wuti, when you started at the club. How much did you earn? Uh, you know, from from different ranks. You know what used to happen at Chiefs is that whenever we won trophies, mm -hmm. Kaiser would say, "You know, I, I'll just have the trophy." Mm -hmm. You take the prize money. Yeah. We used to share the prize money amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. players. Yeah. And by then, things were not as expensive as now. Mm. No, things were cheap by then. Yeah. In the 70s, 80s. Yeah. Oh, things were cheap. So if you had 2,000 rands, yeah. Jesus, you would buy a loaf of bread was bought for five cents. A loaf of bread. How much is it today? 20 rand, 23. Thank you. So the little that we got achieved by then mm. was a lot, a lot of mm. money. But in Mausaina, Mausaina, how much were you getting? Maybe the first couple of years. First couple of years achieved, I earned about three thousand seven per month. Yeah. So you were top earner, top teenage. You <laughs> Almost all the players, because I found all the players there. I was a newcomer. Maybe I was the less paid. Because I was a newcomer. Mm. The others were getting, I never knew Aysen Soleil's salary. I never knew yeah. Shara Nobles, I, I, Peter Palax or whoever. Yeah. I, I never knew. But when you started, you got a 3,700. Yes. And it, that was a lot. And, and uh, these, these uh, uh, Football of the Year awards, mm. Players, Player of the Year, mm. there was even money involved in those. I remember I won a dozen Palsa. A car? Yes, yeah, that's in Paris, yeah. 1981. Eh? Yes. So? I came here to Carlton Center. And I left it there. I said, I'll come tomorrow morning and fetch it. And I left it there. Why, why didn't you take it home? No, but then it was late and I had people who came to uh, bring me to the occasion. <laughs> so I said, no. Xas. I'll come tomorrow and fetch it. And I came the following day. I found it. They yeah. Gave me the keys. 
I went to the receptionist, they gave me the keys, I took the car and went home. And I traded it in for a Yellow XR3, <coughs> the Ford. So the Ford at that time was, was a big brand, eh? Yes, XR3. Yeah. What was that? Mera Yellow. My husband, my friend, I was like, I'm going to go to <laughs> uh, I, yeah? I know. Yeah. But Emma, yeah. never. Mm. You can go anywhere, Baba. Mm. There's only one time that I was arrested. Yeah. At John Foster Square there. Mm. We were going to the teams were closed. Yeah. It was December time. Yeah. And we were going to play in Devon as masters. Because we had about, you remember, said we had about 32 players in Guatemala. Mm. And Riz Masego came with a friend of his mm. who's staying in El, El Dorado Park. Park. Mm. This friend came with a Ford gear. Ah. In the morning, before we went to Deben, I asked Andres and said, Hey, can you please ask this guy to borrow me this car? I want to go to, because I still have Casa Chief's check. Mm. For December, yeah, I wanted to come and change it here because there in Springs you, you wouldn't. Yeah, they'll give you seven or whatever days. Mm -hmm. But here in Jobek, same you, time you change the same time here in Jobek. Yeah, ah. went into the bank. <coughs> we threw the money. As I was getting into the car, a, a, a white guy came to me and said, hey, "Teenage, he knew me. Mm -hmm. This is my car." I said, "I don't joke like that, hey." He said, I'm telling you, this is my car. People, people wanted to fuck this guy up. <laughs> I had to protect him. Hey, I know, guys, wait, 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 wait. And I suggested that we go to John Foster Square. Mm -hmm. He came into the car, we went to John Foster. And when we arrived at John Foster, he said, hey, please, cut the rooftop of the car. You'll find my photo and my wife. They did that. The photo came out. Where did you get this car, teenager? A friend of Andres Masegos gave it to me. I came here to, to, <laughs> to change this check. Check, yeah. Here's the man. Hey, even the money must be stolen, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yes. Kaiser came to John Foster. Mm. He said, hey. Fun boy. You, this is how this is your big. Yeah. You mustn't do things that you don't know. I said, what is it that I don't know? Mm. Take us on somebody you don't know. No, yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> 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 I said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they released me. Mm. Said okay. Go and get the owner of the car. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, the owner agreed. Yeah. He went, mm -hmm. and I went with him to court. Mm -hmm. I was given a five-year sentence, but suspended. Mm -hmm. If you are found with any stolen goods in your possession, you're going to be fined. You're going to be charged. You're going to jail. Yeah. And that <laughs> helped me a lot. I never, <laughs> <laughs> I never wanted, and, and there were too many things that mm -hmm. kept people. Hey man, I've got this man. Hey, hey, can, we, him now, can we then I remember you're going to jail? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't buy anything from anybody. Yeah. I had to go to the shop, straight to the shop, mm. buy, come out with a receipt. That's that helped me a lot. Yeah. Bob Tinis Lala is our guest. Nine minutes left before we close the show, the first show of the year. A gentleman that I said has uh, really done so, so much, uh, probably more than 35 or 40 trophies uh, in his time at uh, KJ Chiefs. Bob Tinich, your, your, your highs, what are your highs at KJ Chiefs? Your proudest moments that you enjoyed at the club? It would be the one of 1981 when I won every existing sportsman award. Mm. Yeah, they, 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 I mean, it had chair on top of it. That one. Yeah. yeah. Nothing beats that. No, nothing beats that. And the lows, the lows of the lows at the club as well? 
or maybe your footballing career? The lows that we had lows because uh, sometimes uh, when Ace was not around, we used to struggle, mm. you know, and people expected us to win. Mm. And when you played against Pirates at Orlando Stadium, whenever an aeroplane passes by, they would shout, Ace, because they know he's not there. And it would affect us to Absolutely. say, if he was here, you know, yeah. we're going to beat these guys. And they beat us. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 want, I want us to, to come to the current uh, state <coughs> of football, generally. Mm. For mm. you, the level of, of South African football uh, about teenage is, is, is no longer the same. To some extent, with someone like you that has achieved so much in South African football, one might say it's, it's sad. What is what is what is maybe I'm not sure if diluted has, is is the right word, but why is South African football as it is now in relation to your times and what we're seeing now? For me, it's you know, I, I don't know who came up with this. Mm -hmm. There are no extramural activities existing at schools nowadays. Mm -hmm. All the players came from schools. Jomason came from school. Mm. Dr. Kumalo came from school. Mm. I came from school. Mm. You know, school football yeah. by then yeah. was at the highest. Mm. But it's no more. So the standard will go down. Mm. Because there are no more footballers at school. We started a school, mm. Takula High School. Yeah. We used to have players there. Top Prof stars. Top players who played in different professional teams. Mm. At school, Mabuya High in Davidon, it was Benoni United's players. Osha, Gabo, Litalata, the horse, Mukhojwa, uh -huh. Mishak, Mchanga, they were all from school. We got players from school mm. in those days. Every Wednesday, they knew, they knew. People knew that day. It's a Wednesday. After lunch, I'm not going put back to work. And they, they, they won't. Yeah. Aye, they'll just work half day. Lunch time, straight to the stadium to watch soccer. Because it was at its highest by then. But now, <coughs> since they destroyed, you know... School sports. When they, <coughs> yeah, school sports. Uh, mm. it should, they should bring it back. Mm. They should. They're supposed to. Yeah. Yeah, hence uh, we, we won't have players who will compete out there. Mm. No, till when are we going to go and get our Serino, Allende, mm. players from outside? Don't we have our own? We, we do. do. We do. So why not groom them? Mm. Development is the key. Yeah. Develop your own so that you don't spend much money to go and buy mm. from outside. So when you. This is close to your heart. This is the team that made you. This is a team that you also contributed so much to. When you see what is happening to the club now, what goes through your mind? Oh. Mm. You know, you know, I don't know how to put it, mm. but it's, it's saddening. Mm. Eight years without a trophy. A team like Kaiser Chiefs, no ways. Mm. No ways, no ways. It's happening very. Mm. Sometimes I, they, they come to me, yeah, yeah, hey, that Chiefs, I say, hey, you're beating these Chiefs, not my Chiefs, okay? Yeah. I'm angry by then. <laughs> 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 but what, 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 what needs to happen uh, about teenage? You, you, I, think, I think you're one of the legends that really can speak about uh, football or Kaiser Chiefs to, to, to that length. What needs to change for them to be competitive? Because the brand is still one of the best, not only in South Africa, but on the continent as well and yes. worldwide. What should happen for Chiefs to return to their former uh, uh, glory days? What I think sh should happen is that, uh, you know, I went to Sundown's development. I coached there from 2020, 2014. Mm -hmm. Peter Mitsimane was still the coach there. Yeah. Uh, 2014 until up to 2021. Mm -hmm. That's when I left Sundowns. Mm -hmm. What I discovered there at Sundowns, all former Sundowns players are in their development. 
the culture of the team doesn't go away at sundowns because all former pro wow. former players are there they sitting together as former players have their own meetings mm -hmm. and discuss the culture of the team mm -hmm. hence sundowns i'm telling you <laughs> they won't beat them that team sundowns yeah oh but but <laughs> i mean I, i want you to to expand on that How important is it? How important is is to have the former legends of football club working in clubs to to pass through that 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 culture, the tradition. What does it do? Why is it important? It is important. But take for instance, mm -hmm. Doctor Kumalo. Yeah, he played for a long time for Chiefs. Mm -hmm. I don't see him in the Chiefs stands or uh, development. In the development from the under 13s to the under 19s, mm. Dr. Kumalo is supposed to be there because he knows the culture of the team. Mm. But I don't see him there. Mm. Abo Maria Maria, they are there. Mm. Banksy Tori for the goalkeepers, mm. he, he's lumping at Chiefs, but he's supposed to be doing something for the keepers there at Chiefs mm. because he knows exactly what the culture of the team is. Mm. We we used to uh, may soul rest in peace. Radam Fukeng, our captain, used to come to Guatemala each and every. When you're playing on Saturday, Sunday, you'll find him in Guatemala. Mm. Just come in to check on us. That's it. We were like this, like a family. Mm. That culture is no more. When they go into the pitch, they've got these on. They don't talk about the game. Hey, hey, we're going what to are, play. What are, what are these? Go, yeah, no. You should discuss the game, the mm. opponents. Mm. Hey, that guy is playing there. He's playing like this. Mm. Hey, man. We should try and contain him like this. And No, they're hitting music. Hey, that's <laughs> and you're, still, you're going to play a game. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't know. But then if, if the club would... <coughs> Would seek your services. Would you would you be able to go back to them and say, "I want to help this club. I want to be part of you know building the next generation of the club." And there's a secret. I, I never wanted to say it, but I will say it. Mm. I've got an academy in Crystal Park, and that academy, the players that I'm going to groom are going to catch chiefs. Some will go to Sundown. Some will go to Paris. Mm. Some swallows whatever. <coughs> But my aim is to get quality players for Chiefs. Mm. I'll be a Chiefs all my life. Ah, thanks, Dr. Mutau. I'm, I'm who I am today yeah. because of him. So uh, I want to repay. Mm. Bob Teenage, it's exactly two o'clock. This is where we close the show. But I think I want to give you the last couple of moments to close the show for us. Um, I want you to give thanks to your wife, to your kids also Bab Chincha Kuluva for what he's done for you and in your life as well. This is your platform to really say thank you to your wife for supporting you throughout your career, throughout your life. I should know that because one is struggling in the department and I know the importance of having a proper partner. Just thank your wife, your family and those that have supported you right up until where you are now. Uh, yes, uh, firstly, I would like to thank God mm. for having, giving me the days that I have. Mm. You know? By the way, in June this year, I'll be seven zero years old. The great 70. 70. 10th June this year, I'll be 70 years old. Thanks God. Yeah. Then I want to thank my wife, you know, for the patience she's had for me. Mm. Dr. Mutau. Yeah. My teammates, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'll stay the whole day here if I have to mention names. Yeah. Ben Cicloudi, yeah. Jackie Masike, Raida Mufuke. Raida Mufuke. Yo, there are too many. Yeah. Too many. All, even my opponents, you know, Jerome Games. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, I, I, I was very, very, very fortunate to have had the opportunity to showcase my talent, talent in soccer. Mm -hmm. I want to thank all those people who touched my life. I <laughs> thank you. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of people that already are lining up for pictures with you. That's how great you are. From myself, Karabo Pasha, the entire team, this show is driven by gentlemen that I also appreciate as well that make sure that this show goes 
on goes on live the gentleman that also came with you bab sizwe uh, sizwe mhluli as well also plays a part in this show baba uh, we appreciate you we love you uh, when i met you a couple of uh, weeks ago at the at the Phillies games final yes. you were so cordial with me you were so welcoming and that's one thing that i take from you that humble yourself wherever you are never think that you know you've arrived and keep on learning from myself the listeners the team Bogot Radio Bogot Man Siabonga thank you so much for your time and I just want to go through what you've done uh, once again so that people understand the great value that you've brought to South African football played for Kaiser Chiefs for 12 years making 408 appearances scoring 125 goals played for the club from 1976 up until 1988 wore the famous jersey number 11 made it famous as well scored one of the most beautiful beautiful hat-tricks up against Durban City in 1979 that led Chiefs to winning the third league title winning titles with Chiefs in 1977 1979 1981 1984 and 1989 as well winning 29 trophies from 1980 to 1989 and played under the great Eloise Eddie Lewis as well as Joe Fickleton I'll leave that because there's more but baba thank you thank you so much for your time we appreciate you may god make you live much more longer and uh, Roberto will make sure that we we'll deliver something special on the 10th of June on your birthday. We 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 grant you that we want to give you that so that we say that we had an opportunity to speak to Siabonga Cool Baba. Akbonga Mune Baba. Wow. And that's how we close the show. One of the greatest players to ever ever do it. Thank you so much. That's the first show of 2024 on the big chat with myself SK Pasha. Once again, thank you so much to the gentleman that helped me run this show. We're back again next week. <laughs>